Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Cell. It's drafty in my house. It's an old house with old windows, and most of them are on the north side, which gets a lot of cold wind. As we are fixing up our house, we're replacing the older windows with more energy efficient windows, but that's not an overnight project. So in the meantime, I've sewn up some draft stoppers to keep most of that wind, some of that wind, out of my house. I sewed some up a few years ago. I was really surprised at how well it worked and how long they've lasted because they're in the window all year round. I don't bother to take them out. In the summer, they actually are very helpful with keeping the bugs from crawling into the house through the window there where it's not a quite a tight fit. This is a really quick project and easy to do. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, first you're gonna need some fabric and you can use scraps or you could use one long piece depending on if you have it. And this can be cotton like mine is or it could be upholstery fabric, it could be um, something that matches the place where it's going, the paint where it's going. It just has to be seven inches in one direction at least. You could also use a leg from an old pair of pants or you could use an old towel. They're quite long and you would just need the one piece. You're also going to need a ruler, a pair of scissors, pins, thread, and hand needles. Now you can do this entire project by hand if you choose. It is done. Just use a tiny stitch so the stuffing doesn't come through. And of course a machine would be a lot faster. But in the end, it's easier to close up the stuffed tube with a hand needle and thread. You're also going to need the stuffing. And rice is a great product to use, dried rice. It's, this is a 10 pound bag, about five pounds per draft stopper if you're using straight rice. Dried beans also work. But I like to mix mine with fabric scraps. And this is just cut up pretty small. Denim, towels, and flannel, some kind of fabric that has some weight and substance to it works really well. Just make sure they're cut small like a size of a blueberry. And we're going to mix that with the rice and you could again use dried beans if you'd like as well. But the most important thing you need, or the place to start I should say, is you're going to need to know how long to make your draft stopper. So you need to measure, a way to measure, either the inside of the window or the bottom of the door, wherever it's going. When you get that measurement, write it down. So I'm going to make mine out of scraps. So I just am playing around with my scraps to see what I like and what I like together. And I really like this bug fabric, but it has to be seven inches in one direction. It's only five inches in the direction that the bugs go. It is seven inches in that way, but then my bugs would be sideways. So you want to keep that in mind if you have directional fabric. It needs to be seven inches in the way the direction is intended to go if it's going to bother you that the print is sideways. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I have seven inches in one direction at least, and I just make a straight edge to start on a scrap like this, an odd shaped. And I'm marking with a ballpoint pen um, where I need to, because if there's any pin left, you're not gonna see it. it's on the seam allowance, which is inside the draft stopper. So there's one piece, and then I got a second piece, I'm not really planning this. I'm planning as I go along. I'm not really sure how much of my length I've already covered with these two pieces. So it looks like I can be done with just cutting out one more piece of fabric and that would be, be great. So let me measure and see what I have. So the two together, I just have them butted up together, is 17 inches. But remember, I'm going to lose an inch when I sew those two together with a half inch. Every time I have a seam, it's a half inch seam allowance on each. Plus a half inch at the end, that brings me at 15 and a half. And a half inch at the other end, that brings me to 15. So I am going to need, for that out of the last fabric, I'm going to need 16 inches plus a one inch seam allowance for the ends, a half inch on each end. I'm going to need 17 inches. So basically what you need is seven inches tall by the length you need plus one inch because there's a half inch seam allowance on both ends. So if you're doing this in pieces like I am, you need to add a half inch to each piece on both ends because there's a half inch seam allowance for joining the pieces together. All right, 
So I've cut my last one there and now I'm going to line up the short ends or the seven inch ends and right sides together, pin them, take them to the machine and sew them together. You can do this by hand and I put a link to my hand stitch video in the description below. I would use a running stitch that's very tiny or I would use a back stitch. Just so the stuffing doesn't come out. All right, I'm gonna take that to the machine and I've sewn them together. I've pressed my seam allowances to one side. You can press them open, but you should at least finger press them if you don't wanna press them at all. And pressing, I mean an iron. So now I am going to fold this rectangle in half lengthwise to make the draft stopper. Again, you're going to pin it together and you're gonna have a half inch seam allowance all the way around. You're gonna do one short end and then you're gonna sew across the long end. You take it to your machine, you can start at the bottom or you could start at the top, doesn't matter. And you're gonna start sewing down, back tack a little bit to secure it at the top, especially where you're putting the stuffing in, all the way down, do 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 do. When you get to the corner, Stop a half inch before you turn and then sew to the end and back tack again. Remember you're gonna pivot with the needle down into the fabric still at the machine. I'm doing a good job not running over my pins this time. When I get to the end, I kind of eyeball the half inch. I mark it with the pin so I can easily see it. Back tack. I pivoted the fabric with the needle down in the fabric. And now it's all sewn. Now I clipped my corners here out of habit, but you don't need to do that unless you have very bulky, thick fabric. Then you're gonna turn the tube inside out. This is kind of the thing, the, this is the step you need the most patience with. It is a wide enough tube that it's fairly easy, but it's also kind of, um, it, needs, it requires patience, for me at least. Got that all turned out, and now it is time to stuff that into the open end. So I have my bowl of fabric scraps and this very heavy uh, bag of rice. If you were doing straight rice or dried beans, again, you could pour it directly in, and that would be the easiest way as far as stuffing it goes. And I put a little rice at the beginning anyway, just to um, put some weight in it. It needs the rice for the weight. Now to get this mixture, and I've mixed it all together, I do about 50-50 rice and, and fabric scraps. It's not the easiest way. So I've got this um, piece of cardboard out of my recycling, my favorite cookies, and I've made a little scoop, like, and it works. It doesn't work the best until I trim down the scoop, the neck part that goes into the tube. That made a big difference. Also what really helped was putting the scoop on top of the seam allowance in the tube so that the seam allowance inside the tube didn't catch the fabric scraps. Then of course you have to take it off the table every once in a while and um, shake the stuffing down to the bottom. But it's filling up pretty well. Now I've done these a lot before in the past and when I used all stuffing it didn't work so well. So it really a mixture of something heavy and then the um, fabric scraps. When I say stuffing I meant fabric scraps. A mixture of the two works really well. You just want to make sure that they're cut pretty small like half inch by half inch or the size of a blueberry as long as you don't use those teeny tiny blueberries. Okay when you're all done stuffing it you want to take the open end and fold it in about a half inch to the inside and pin it shut. We are going to hand stitch it closed but if you wanted to you could do it by machine you would just stitch across the end there. You just want to prop up this heavy thing with some books next to your sewing machine so it's easier to sew by machine. The weight of it makes it a little more difficult. But I'm going to do this by hand because it's pretty easy. I'm I'm just using a slip stitch or a whip stitch. It's kind of crude, but it is a draft stopper. It's not a gown and it gets the job done. At the end, I just want to make sure I secure it well with a knot because remember this rice, tiny pieces can come out. I 
I like this knot where you make one loop, you put your needle through it here, and then before the second, before that loop closes or circle, you stick your needle back through it. It's very secure and easy. All right, it's done. That was it. Just even out the stuffing and make sure you don't have any leaks. You shouldn't, but maybe it's good to double check. Well, all that's left to do now is go ahead and stick it in the window. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.